Hey internet, welcome back to the fifth language learning log of where I track my progress in learning Japanese. Um, if you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm a student at NYU studying computer science and linguistics, and this is my fifth language learning log, which is kind of implied by learning log number five. I'm much less elated than I was two weeks ago, which is good. The energy of the last learning log was not the right energy to have. That being said, a, a few like disclaimers that I, I definitely should have made a while ago, but I forget that people actually watch these videos, even if it's only like 10 or 15 people. So the first bullet point is I'm no expert on anything. <laughs> what I say in these videos is not like the final word. I think it was unfortunate that the last one was about grammar and I also chose to make that the most unstructured learning log because I don't think grammar is itself all important for learning a language. I just really enjoy grammar and so that was most of last time and trying to communicate that but it just bombed. I even checked off the box that said like show this to my subscribers because I was like this is not a good learning log but someone left a really thoughtful comment and I was like okay I need to be aware of these things. I, I don't need to put emphasis on grammar or whatever like more than anything else. I'm just trying to find my own method and see if it works since I've noticed throughout my linguistics classes these things have helped me and that's the idea with these learning logs. For the first chunk of it I will talk about some principle of linguistics, open your mind to a few new terms or such, and hopefully that helps you on your language learning journey. A quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson is, as to methods, there may be a million and then some, but principles are few. The man who grasps principles can successfully select his own methods. The man who tries methods, ignoring principles is sure to have trouble. Long story short, don't look at me and be like, I'm gonna you know, do this and it's gonna work for me because the same thing won't work for everybody. My pet theory, my little theory that I'm trying out is about linguistics, not grammar. I put too much emphasis on grammar, technically on purpose in the last video, but I think as an adult, having an understanding of linguistics is truly important. Long story short, if we can teach ourselves whether it be grammar frames, phonological frames, semantic frames, pragmatics, idiomatic expressions, which technically falls under semantics in my head, all that stuff of language, then as we immerse ourselves by watching TV or reading, we can more aptly uh, assign things to a certain part of a pattern. Immersion is great. Everything points to immersion as of right now, pretty much, but I'm just trying a different road. <laughs> immersion is super important, of course. You need to hear things, whatever. We shouldn't try to replicate exactly what kids do. That's all my, my little theory here is. And that's all it is, a theory. I have not proven anything. I'm also not I have two linguistics classes before I have a degree in it, so listen to me, try things out, see if it works for you, whatever. In that context, there's a book, I'll be talking about why I haven't finished this later, called Making Sense of Japanese, and it talks about some really cool nuances of a language, and as adults, we can understand those nuances on a general level. You can explain to me the nuances between wa and ga in Japanese, in English, and I can understand it. You don't have to, you know, do it in Japanese. Uh, that's the first, like, two minutes of this video, whatever. Each of these learning logs starts off with just some idea of linguistics to say, here's something you might not know about. Again, it's unfortunate that the energy of the last one was so all over the place. This one is much more structured, not as structured as the first three though. As an adult, I think linguistics is important. You don't need to put your head in a textbook. I'd probably encourage you not to. I just don't think immersion is the only component. It's an important one, but my theory is testing linguistics. So that being said, uh, today we're talking about phonetics and phonology. So quick uh, disclaimer <laughs> for this as well. This is my worst area of linguistics for two reasons. One, it was the it was the unit I did worst on in my linguistics one class. And two, I haven't taken any explicit phonology classes. I took phonetics, which was taught in French about French phonetics. So that's where a lot of this comes from, but I've never taken a phonology class. And if you don't know the difference, phonetics is sort of a subset of phonology as far as I like to think about it. Phonetics is all about classifying speech sounds and whatnot. It's the study of speech sounds and what classification they're under, whether it be anatomical or whatever. Uh, and then phonology deals with systems of sounds. And so you can kind of think as phonetics as a subset of phonology because phonology often looks at phonetics and then brings it into a bigger picture. Today's thing is really quick because again, I have not read as much on phonetics and phonology or learned as much as I have semantics and grammar. I personally, semantics is my, my vibe, which is actually, I think the next learning log is the philosophical one where I might talk about semantics. But that aside, when it comes to phonetics, I think the important thing to understand is that there are different sounds. For example, I'm gonna just insert a quick clip from, I believe learning log three, where I talked about voiced and voiceless sounds in Japanese. Ka, ki, ku, ke, and ko 
are all ga, gi, gu, ge, and go, which is the voiced sound. G g is the voiced version of k. So the idea here is that if we can understand that there is a pattern between sounds, uh, as well as there being sounds that we, as native speakers of whatever language we speak, don't know of, that, that we can't make. In theory, eh, in very strongly studied and proven theory, babies can make all of the available sounds and as you grow up, within the first, I believe, six months, if I remember from my class correctly, babies take all these sounds and narrow them down, more or less, to what they're hearing. And babies can make distinctions very surprisingly early on between different sounds in different languages. Being aware that these different sounds exist can make learning to speak a little easier, a little more focused, because as my pet theory might state, we as adults can't just keep hearing the same sound over and over again and try to replicate it. We could, but that's gonna take a while. But if you look for x-rays or I should say ultrasounds online about the anatomy of the throat, of the mouth, of the tongue, and understand these different sounds, you can make a bunch of different sounds, I guess. Simple example is the French R. The English R is very difficult for French speakers, and the French R is very difficult for English speakers. Well, how can I not think of a single... <laughs> ranger? I don't know if that's a thing, but ranger? That air is not an easy sound to make when you're first learning French. I don't even think I have it fully there. But the R, 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 like that's a that's a hard sound to make. For Japanese speakers, the L sound, L, a lateral liquid or glide, one of, I think the liquid and the glide are the same thing. Post me, you know what to do. Very difficult sound to make, but if you can study these sounds, listen to them, it's very helpful. Uh, and how to do that, I'll get to in just a second. Uh, and then phonology is the bigger picture, and that's what I think is relevant to learning a new language. My, you know, slightly educated opinion here. Look up your target language's sound inventory and look up your native language's sound inventory. So, so random tabs aside, if we go ahead and look at English phonology on Wikipedia, uh, I'm kind of weirdly centered with my face cam, whatever. Go down, this here is your sound of in inventory, at least of consonants. These symbols might not make any sense to you. These words might not make any sense to you. All of this is kind of explaining your anatomy. You can hover over Wikipedia. I encourage you to do your own level of research. A good reference is iphr.com. Uh, scrolling down and you can hear what these all sound like. Now, if I go to Japanese phonology, which in theory I should be able to just change this to Japanese, Yep. The chart is filled in differently. There are different sounds in the language, but there are also the same sounds. And you know, you can read all this if you want, but yeah, that's, that's, I think this is really important because when I first learned about these, it kind of blew my mind. <laughs> F and V, again, I talked about it in that clip. Uh, alveolar, specifically part of the mouth. And then if we look at Japanese again, I should just open these in separate tabs, but let's look for the glide here. Alveolar approximant. All right, maybe I'm just totally wrong about it. I think approximants are glides or something like that. I could be wrong. Again, post me, you know what to do. But if we look at alveolar approximant, we go to Japanese. Um, there are no approximants, I guess, in Japanese, which again, <laughs> I don't know. Semi-vowels, interesting. Okay, I just learned something new. Again, I don't know much about that. It's good to do the research, hear these sounds, because according to this small pet theory of mine, right? If we can teach ourselves that these sounds exist, then when we immerse ourselves, we watch TV, listen to podcasts, listen to music, something I've been doing a lot recently while wow, this is getting long, it can help us make more use of that immersion. You know, on a very simple level, as young children, babies even, it's no longer a matter of taking all the sounds we can make and narrowing them down to our target language. It's now a matter of learning the anatomy, how to make those new sounds and making that implicit memorization. Very simple example in Japanese, the ri is not, I don't think I have that right yet, but it's not ri, it's not ri, re, ro. It's ri, re, ro. Again, I don't know if I have that right, but I think I'm on the right track. Speaking can be one of the hardest parts of a language, and if that's one of your incentives, this is something to look into so that you can put effort into your accent. It's not, je voudrais une baguette, s'il vous plaît. It's, je voudrais une baguette, s'il vous plaît. Again, my French accent's not perfect, but I'm making an effort, and that's what counts. That's it for phonetics and phonology. The idea from now on is just make you aware of these things, you get to self-moderate your own research and what you do. I would simply encourage you to look into these things. My progress. It's my turn now. If you don't care about my progress, you can leave. If you care, you can stay. If you have nothing better to do, stay. Give me the watch time, it's okay. <laughs> Goal review was to read the first short story in this book, finish this book called Making Sense of Japanese and start speaking by August 1st. That being said, I've recorded some progress clips and some things I've noticed throughout the week. I'm gonna try and cut those down to two minutes and we'll put that in now.
All right, so July 19th, it is Monday. Uh, I'm gonna be out of the city for the weekend, but I am starting on the, um, and I wanted to make the progress part of this video actually the progress logs. So I started on the first part of the final review and it's a bunch of like Japanese place names and stuff, but it's effectively got like a little word bank on the bottom uh, there. <laughs> uh, of all the hiragana spellings of all these. And so what I've been doing is I've been looking at the English ones, for example, Tokyo and being like, okay, Tokyo, that's how I would spell it. And then comparing my answers with the word bank and then looking for it, which is a good way I think to practice to make sure I have the right sounds. And I'm doing really well with hiragana. Katakana, I still have to do a lot more memorization on and that's the next thing. All I can really do is pronounce hiragana. I can't actually like read it, if assuming reading uh, entails understanding it. But yeah, so I'm going through and I'm, I'm doing all right. My handwriting, <laughs> of course, sucks in all languages. One thing that I'm noticing is very difficult for me right now is understanding when a vowel is gonna be elongated. So for example, Hyogo Prefecture is, as I pre as I thought, would be he and then yo, so for the double consonant sound, but there's also an u that comes after it to elongate the sound. Getting the instinct for that is gonna take a while. It is Tuesday, July 27th, and I just wanted to, you know, throw some midweek updates in case the learning log goes more of this journalistic fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the ceiling. I have noticed that I'm becoming much better, more cognizant of, I don't want to say segmentation because words don't quite jump out at me, but sound segmentation, I suppose. My hiragana uh, pronunciation ability, I'm at like 90%. Katakana is more like 60, 70%. So I'm going to keep using Quizlet and stuff, but I'm listening to music a lot, watching anime and whatnot, and I'm becoming a lot better at hearing, oh, there's ga there, ooh, ka, oh, wa, which is very good because I don't know when this really happened. And that's the wonderful thing about progress like this. These things, all of a sudden you notice them and you're like, huh, hey, I can do that now. The second observation is just how important kanji is and what I need to do to memorize that. As I'll state at the end of the learning log, my goal for, I guess, the next learning log and beyond will be to learn kanji, uh, a certain subset, of course. You can't just learn it all. I'm gonna say pronounce from now on because reading to me means I can pronounce it and then understand it, but I can't quite understand it because I don't know full words yet. The other thing, the reason why I'm recording this is because, now I'll talk on a future language log about the whole immersion thing. It was saying a little bit about how you should get reading material. Oh, this is kind of, oh, this is so sick. So I think there's a store here in New York City where you can buy like manga and light novels and whatnot. I recently went to look for manga online and I couldn't find any. I got four books that I will not be able to read. This is so sick though. Ah, no, God, this is so funny. It's surprisingly cheap as well, relatively. It was about $44 to get two manga, two light novels. Oh no, oh no. I I feel like an ultimate weeb right now, but hey, I'm here for it. It's, it's honestly, hey, it'll be useful material anyway. The shipping was four yen, Japanese yen, less than the subtotal, than the like items combined. So in my opinion, it's worth it. Plus I'm not gonna be able to read these for at least another year, but I will just flip through them and <laughs> holy crap. Wow, wow, I'm not gonna be able to do a damn thing. <laughs> I can't read. Oh, I can't read any of it. I love this. Now, if I haven't said it before, my goal is to read Japanese as well as I can speak it. In other words, I should improve both uh, as time goes on. Uh, that's the next in line for me to watch without sub or rewatch without subtitles. Two Sword Art Online light novels. These are just, <laughs> why can't I read it left to right? <laughs> Sword Art Online was an anime I watched like a year or two ago when COVID started. And it gave me this like existential crisis. So I became a really big fan of it. Right now I'm re-watching it all, but without subtitles or anything. Cause I remember the general gist of each episode and whatnot. Not that I can really understand it, but it's nice to not have subtitles that I have to keep reading. So I can focus on hearing sounds and whatnot. I think it's super important. And I'm also watching anime that like isn't, that I've never seen before, but with subtitles. Because again, knowing what people are talking about is also very helpful. So yeah, these two are light novels. That's the main reason I did these is because they're light novels and not manga. A uh, quick intermittent note, I still haven't read through this. So this is priority one. These are just gonna be to flip through and pronounce. This is where I start my understanding and how much I can understand and read and 
whatever. I don't know. This is what I would consider like a middle school, early high school reading, like the equivalent of Ranger's Apprentice, I guess. Anyway, I, I, this is the longest update part of this log. I was just very, very excited uh, to get the, this material. And eventually, um, I'm hoping that A, I can, next time I get some, which will be in like two years, I'll be able to like sit down and actually read it at like a second grade level, right? I think in a year, I should be able to read at like a kindergarten level with a dictionary in Google Translate and whatnot by my side. <gasps> oh my God, some of the kanji have furigana next to it. That's so useful. Cause I don't know how to look up kanji translations without knowing how they're pronounced. Oh, there's one with three hiragana. Woo, I'm excited. This is really exciting though. I'm actually doing it. I didn't get this far with Russian. Anyway, yeah, on to, on to the next thing. Okay, so I'm kind of sending it with this different format of uh, learning log and just doing updates throughout the week. It's the, it's Wednesday? <laughs> the 28th. So someone recommended I look up these two artists on Spotify for music. But then I was like, wait, what if I instead looked them up later and looked up a different vibe of Japanese music? Because I don't know how to look up different genres right now. So it's gonna be poking around Spotify, seeing if I can find a very different song on like my recommended or whatever it's called feed. And then going down the rabbit hole a little bit to get some really different music, but still in Japanese. So I'm gonna give that a shot now as I hop on the subway and go to work. <laughs> Quick update, my hair's a mess cause it's like eight in the morning. I haven't showered, I have kickboxing, doesn't matter. Anyway, watching TV. Just finished breakfast. I wanted to make a quick note about, <clears throat> I think I mentioned in one of the last clips of this learning log that I'm getting better at segmenting sound. I don't really know if that's a thing, but I'm getting better at recognizing the sounds and being like, oh, that's like the ending of a word. Oh, that's a word. Oh, that's a particle that does this. But I'm starting to be more cognizant of, I guess it's, it might be pitch accent. I don't want to say pitch accent because I don't know if that's correct, but just the ups and downs of Japanese. I don't want to say pitch accent because I don't think I'm grasping the um, influence of pitch accent on the language, but I am noticing the ups and downs more and more now as opposed to just, oh, it was, you know, these couple of sounds. No, it's these couple of sounds said in this particular way. And we're back. Wonderful. One second for me, maybe two, maybe three minutes for you. So that's kind of been some observations throughout the week. All in all, pretty poor progress on my behalf. I simply don't think I've been clear enough on my goals. And more importantly, I haven't been explicit enough on my deadlines. So right here in front of me, I have some very explicit deadlines. Really quick, I didn't finish this because I've been reading other books and stuff, but also I, I literally read it and I'm like stopping to think and I'm taking notes and stuff here and there, uh, which is good, but yeah. I haven't finished this yet because my katakana was really bad. So I did, a, I've been like when I'm on the subway, it's me like sitting there. I even did this when I was running on the treadmill once. I'd be like going through Quizlet with the flashcards. I'm like, Kore, okay, oro, okay, frick, I don't know what this one is. Like saying this out loud. And it's been great practice. I think my hiragana, I've got like 90% of them down, katakana 60, 70%. Reading through this short story, it's kind of funny because I can hear how slow I'm going. Picking a random sentence here. Ayako no ne no. That's, is that me? That's me no mae ni ha. Could be wa, I don't know if that's a subject or topic. Chi sata o toi. Again, my accent's probably crap, but I'm reading slowly. The good thing is I'm reading, even though I'm reading really slowly. And what's more important for me is that two weeks ago, I was looking at that and I, you know, every third kana, I'd be like, frick, I don't know what this one is. But now I'm better at it. So it's been, you know, it's been good to learn the kana, but I'm way behind. That being said, all on explicit deadlines, my new goals are to finish this writing book by Wednesday. Depending on how editing this goes, I'm gonna do the midweek clips again, but all it comes down to is practice, practice, practice. And there's a word search stuff. So yeah. Finish this by Wednesday. All in all, I think I have too much to do when I sit down, or too much I can do when I sit down to study Japanese. And a lot of the time it turned out to just be reading this or going on Heylingo or something. Speaking of language learning apps, <laughs> if you want a free Ling app subscription for a few weeks, let me know in the comments. Uh, just let me know what you're, what, you're lear what you're learning or working on. There we go. I am gonna put a time block aside on Thursday to sit down for an hour, an hour and a half, go through the short story, read it, and go back and forth between the kanji, which I'm gonna be talking about in just a minute, between kanji and the, the bold vocab that I don't know, and looking at some grammar things, because if there's vocab there, like a name, I know that ha, 
pronounced wa when it's the particle, indicates that a topic, but I don't know a lot of them. Um, there's a cool app that I came across called Bunpo, totally free, which blows my mind. Very explicitly meant for Japanese as far as I can understand, but has some pretty clear lessons and looks like it'll be a good start for kanji. But anyway, I'll keep practicing my hiragana and katakana uh, with Quizlet. It's become an easy thing to do, which is great. It's become the thing where it's like, oh, I don't want to read, so I'll just do this instead. And I still don't have them 100% down. Something I did, this was where the progress was like doing well at the start of the week, more or less. I would go on Quizlet, Turn the flashcards to show me like the the romanji, so like the ka sa k a s a, and then I would practice writing them out and recalling what <laughs> what the the kana were. So I have about six pages of this and practicing stroke order because that's incredibly important to put it one way. I've been listening to a lot of music and I haven't been watching that much TV, but most of it has been anime, some with subtitles, some with not. So I think maybe I'll start jumping on some beginner podcasts, but like I've been vibing with Japanese music lately. Uh, and as you saw in those little observations, I've been noticing some segmentation. On Friday, speaking of deadlines, once the writing, not once, when, because, hmm, because the writing book will be done and I've read the first short story, it's funny how I, bought the manga and light novels and I can't even read the short story. It's really cool to look at that and say, I want to read those one day. Because that's like a year out, two years out maybe, I think. Fully reading and understanding these things, or those those light novels, especially in the manga. No, it's it's at least a year out with dictionary help. But it gives me something to look forward to because if I'm if I keep my goal as become fluent in Japanese, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna lose interest fast. Simply because it's gonna take me three, four, five years to get to a very comfortable level, which is where I want to be, right? So if I have these little stretch goals to look forward to, I can't lose track of those. So it's like, oh, I get to read those one day. First, I gotta read these. Uh, once I finish the writing book, that's like first thing done. Speaking of those little stretch goals, I can now look at Japanese and pronounce it, which is really cool. And it's a great goal. It, it reminds me, you know, it kind of didn't just happen, but like I'm looking at that short story yesterday. I was on the subway reading it and I was like, huh, I can pronounce this now. I didn't even finish my bullet point on kanji, but it's been great remembering the sounds because I'll look at a character and remember the sound and think, oh, okay. Like, the sound will help me, so it's cool coming to that realization that I'm not as reliant on visual stuff as I wanted to be, I guess. Oh, I've been speaking so much the last couple of days, I really don't get it. So, speaking of flashcards, I want, on Friday, put aside time to start with 20 kanji. All in all, I want to start a Quizlet set, just 20 on Friday that I can memorize in the following week. 100 by the end of August is a very ambitious goal, but I do generally want to get there. So I will stack on kanji to that Quizlet list. And as I go through it, I'll have the front be the kanji and then the back will be the hiragana with English so that I can test myself in the future. Eventually I do want to use Anki, but right now setting up Anki is a really big commitment and I want to make sure I have a solid bank of kanji to set up uh, before I begin Anki. Whew. So that's like the first week in a nutshell. In a nutshell, he says that he took 10 minutes to explain it. Very long learning log. If you've stuck around, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. It's just fun to look back on these things. And today I'm very talkative, but not very hyper, which is great. So finish the writing book by Wednesday, spend the hour and a half on Thursday. It'll take to get through the first short story and you know, learn something from it. On Friday, make those first 20 flashcards. So then the next week, I'm gonna make sure my kana are really down by just reading the light novel, sorry, pronouncing what's on the light novels. I have a distinction now in my head of reading and pronunciation. I wanna sit on sit down with the light novels and simply just go through and pronounce. Like I've been doing with the short stories, but because I have those light novels, I want to use the short stories as something to aim to understand because they're meant for that. And then the light novels will be just practice reading. Uh, practice pronunciation. I'm not gonna understand it. A lot of the kanji has furigana next to it, which is nice. Video about hey lingo and the importance of gamification and language learning and the cons of it, the traps of it on Thursday. So if you're curious, definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, gonna be a fun video once I finish it. Uh, with some ling app here and there and continue working on my vocab and production uh, with the chat bottom ling app and whatever hey lingo continues to offer. And lastly, I will pick up Take Kim's Grammar Guide again, starting next week, because I want to finish making sense of Japanese like tomorrow latest. That will bring me to middle of August. And from there, I'm not entirely sure. I wrapping up my over gold do, over gold do's. Yeah, overdue goals, there we go. <laughs> this week, regardless of how busy Monday is gonna get, is definitely priority one. Monday is just gonna be a super busy day. Saturday today, I'm getting two videos out for some reason. I think I definitely had a good stride going into this 
this week, but then I just stopped because of those lack of external goals. I made five things I'll do today, and so I procrastinated on all five of those things. So if I'm gonna do things in parallel, I need to get better at it. But also I have to keep diversifying my resources. So the conclusion is that this has a much better structure. <laughs> if you are curious about language learning, again, I'm just talking about my progress. And before that, I talked about some phonetics. The least you can do to learn a language is just watch TV in that language or listen to music. That's literally the least you can do. <laughs> so yeah, uh, call to action for you all is to leave a comment down below. What do you think of the phonetics phonology bit? What do you think about my progress? Do you think I'm doing something drastically wrong? What are you working on and how are you working on it? I'm always curious to hear strategies of other people. Uh, on the Discord server, someone recommended me an app for kanji that I'm gonna be trying when I get to the kanji flashcard bit. I think I have it on my list tomorrow to check out. I'm looking at a bunch of different tools, expanding my little repertoire here to balance the importance of immersion, learn something new, hopefully get more out of that immersion, rinse and repeat. Let me know what you're doing, what you're working on, what languages or not down in the comments below. I gotta go edit two videos. <laughs> the other video is the July reading ramble. If you haven't checked that out, I'll put a card here. Why not? Have a good one. Keep up with whatever you're learning and or working on. I will see you in two weeks. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay. Awesome. Peace out.